Here, we want to determine the velocity of a particle moving according to this position function at t equals one by looking at successively smaller intervals when we compute the average velocity formula. That sounds like a mouthful. What is really going on here? Um, what they really want us to do is just cut to the chase. We're gonna, we don't care about these intervals. We care about this interval. It's this interval that's gonna give us the best picture of what the velocity will look like at t equals one. So we're gonna use these two numbers, this guy's a and this guy's b. We're gonna plug them into our handy dandy average velocity uh, formula. When I do so, and I take 1.0001 and plug it in here, I get uh, 4.0009. I think it's like 0008 after that, but this is good enough. Minus, uh, well, let's actually be, mm, yes, let's go the whole, let's go the whole way, zero, zero, uh, zero, eight, I think, minus what I get when I plug in one, and when I plug in one, I get four, all divided by b minus a, so that'd be 1.0001 minus one, which gives me uh, 0.00090008 over 0.0001 which if I get a calculator or do some quick mental math, gives me 9.0008. Gee, this looks awfully close to what number? Well, the 0 0.0008 is kind of tiny. We can just kind of get rid of it. And so you could probably guess that the instantaneous velocity at t equals one equals nine. Now, if you haven't taken calculus before, you can stop this video now. Uh, or if you're just curious how calculus works a little bit, can I get a sneak peek of what's to come? S stay tuned, because I want to show people who have taken calculus how you might have done this back in Calc 1 the first time you took it. Uh, instantaneous velocity is synonymous with the derivative. So instantaneous velocity is the derivative. We're going to take the derivative of this using the power rule. You might be familiar with this. Power rule says the two comes down in front, reduce the power by one, so we get 16t the derivative of negative 7t is just negative 7, and the derivative of 3 is just 0. And now that I have the derivative, I'm supposed to find the velocity at t equals 1. I'm going to go ahead and plug in 1 into my derivative. And this is going to give me 16 times 1, which is 16, minus 7, which is 9. That's the same answer we got over here, but it didn't require us using some crazy calculator and some crazy uh, average velocity formula. We just took the derivative using our derivative rules what we knew before and got that answer. Now remember, if you, if you haven't taken calculus before, this concept of a derivative must be relatively new to you. Don't worry if you don't know how to do this yet. You will in due time, but this is just kind of a teaser of what's to come and also kind of a refresher for those who have taken calculus. Um, but either way, no matter how you do the problem, you're going to get an answer of 9.